Uh, welcome to the Beyond the Exercise podcast. I am your host, Manny, and I am so excited for this podcast today. It's going to be a very special one. Why? Because I get to sit down right next to Michael Babayan, my brother, <laughs> one of the people that I admire most for doing what he does right now, which we will get into while we go into the podcast. And also because this is one of my first podcasts. This is a long time, a long time goal of mine to just finally get on camera, get on a podcast, talk to people that I really look up to in the fitness area. And I'm excited. And uh, I would love to introduce my buddy, Joshua Tevez. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Um, it feels like I got to live up to that. Uh, <laughs> a big. I appreciate that, man. You you said you looked up. I you know we met like years back, and you know that's pretty cool that you. So we kept in contact, and you know, you know we're doing our own thing. So. And this is kind of cool, too. Yeah. I like this. Sounds good. I'm so happy to see what you've cultivated here in Jersey City, brother. Like, I first met you when I did a certification course through Strong First. Yes. And the thing about it was I was still a baby trainer back then. Mm -hmm. I was maybe two years in and was just figuring out what personal training really meant and try to be more diverse with how I trained because all I knew was powerlifting and bodybuilding. And then I take this course and I see you in the crowd with all the instructors. You have the pants on, tucked in shirt, <laughs> collar, hands behind your back. It's all optics. It's all optics. All optics. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, that dude's Filipino, guaranteed. <laughs> It's like his grandma taught him to put his hands behind his back oh, and he's ready. My my girlfriend always makes fun of me that I do walk in a store like that unprompted. It is uh, it's something generational right. or in our genetics, whatever. But yeah. So, oh, brother, so thank you so much for allowing me time today to step in this concrete jungle of weights, kettlebells, barbells, rowers, assault bikes, everything. Yeah. And it's such a honor to sit down and really see what you've been able to build here in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because as I'm seeing all these different types of gyms in New York City and the New Jersey area, I want to say this is by far one of the best gyms that I've seen um, besides cleanliness because obviously there's chalk all over the place, chalk but all over. that's, that's what, how we do it. Yeah, yeah, that's what makes us who we are. I always I wanted to uh, outfit this as a lifter's gym. So any legitimate lifter, anybody that's like uh, want to take this seriously, they walk in. I'm like, yeah, this is the place where I want to be. Yeah, there's chalk on the floor. We're not, you know uh you you'll you'll brick all over the walls and and it's uh it's an it's an industrial gritty vibe all right you know it's not hey we don't have air conditioning here we don't have eucalyptus towels when you walk in it's not gonna smell like you know a mist of uh tea tree oil no it's none of that it's like we're you know what you're here for and you know what it's about so i i, I appreciate um the compliment and uh yeah yeah i i, I did the I I have a team of people that work here, so we you know we we're trying to we communicate. We try to make this as best place as possible. The experience is, I want it to be second to none. So right. that's the goal. So what was the idea when you first built Ironbound Performance Athletics here in Jersey City? What was the idea of what you wanted it to be in the beginning, and what it finally became mm -hmm. now? Why. Well, when I started, uh, I was in the personal training realm. I think when you met me, I was still a personal trainer at a uh, corporation gym um, in in New Jersey. Okay. Um, and at that time, uh, it was more like, hey, I, I like what I was doing, but I wanted to have more of a, like I have a vision of what people should be doing. And I wanted that creative control. And I didn't feel I had it at this point place and um at a next at the next town over in hoboken uh and i was like you know what let me just bring what i feel should be what people should focus on and bring that to jersey city because i felt that it was not there it you know so i brought that and i did have like if i had a vision board when i was 18 i said to myself i'll have a gym before i turn 30 
And uh, lo and behold, 2017, I was 29 at the time, uh, we uh, started working on the gym. Um, 2017, did I say 2017? Mm -hmm. 2017, uh, that's when we, that was our first year we opened. And we, I didn't have any background in group fitness. Mm -hmm. It was just personal training, one-on-one right. -on -one at very, at the most was two. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, hey, let's have a group class and a group class of 18 people max. Um, and it would just be the personal training vibe. Like, like you'll do your push, pull, hinge, squat, but with really legitimate weights, no pink dumbbells, um, do real compound lifts and go to a place that's really serious. And me who has no group fitness background and I never even took I didn't even take any uh, group classes in the in the city or elsewhere, so I wouldn't even know what they're about. Since then, I have taken some group classes. Um, but yeah, fast forward, new location. Uh, we survived the pandemic. 2020, we opened in this facility, which is the working area is 2,000 square feet. It's 40 by 50. Oh, nice. uh, yeah, the biggest space. Uh, like we didn't do much cleanup to set this up. This is pretty much, we had a class an hour ago. Um, it's definitely evolved into something else that I never thought it would be. And I think it was for the better. I think I did get a lot of feedback from clients and coaches that I've hired. I'm like, oh, hey, people like this. Some people don't like that. And which I had to take in some feedback. I had to learn how to take feedback. And um, we sort of like are the staple of group classes mm -hmm. in Jersey City. Right. You know, so uh, that's where it is. I don't know how to describe this. Like uh, you asked me earlier, was this CrossFit? People ask me. I get that question all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's not. It's I don't know what it is. It's it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. I don't know what where to label it as. If anyone were to ask me, I think functional trainer is the term people like to uh, functional training is the term that people like to use. But I, I, I don't know. I think it's more than that. I just don't know how to describe it. So right. uh, that's that's where we are right now. I feel like if anybody wants to come try it out, come check it out. It's different. Right, and you're located right in the middle of Jersey City. Yeah, right? three three four Second Street, uh, middle of Newark and Coles. Um, uh, location was great. Uh, we get a it's a very neighborhood type place. Whenever mm -hmm. whenever anyone thinks downtown, they think of more of like those bars and the areas over there. Uh, we're a little bit a little bit out of the way, uh, but very neighborhood vibe. A lot of people that um um that you know that walk to get here. Only a few really commute to get here, but like where to spread. This is our neighborhood gym. It's a serious gym, but it's a fun gym too. Like there's a sense of community and that's where people sort of congratulate me on. Right. And I feel like I'm like the Michael Scott meme yeah. where he, his boss congratulates him and he has a mullet. All right. Like good job on having a community. I just made people, I just told them to do workouts, you know, I was like, do some push ups, Right. And then like all of a sudden the community organically came about. Right. And you know, I've had events, we've had, uh, uh, Christmas parties. Uh, we're having uh, a casino night next month. Um, we we travel to places. Of lifelong friendships have been formed here. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's cool. It's like it it was more than I ever imagined it to be. Right. You know? It's not just a place to count reps. It's 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 our third home. Right. You know? I love everything you said, but like the one thing that really stood out on all of that is it's a serious place, but also a fun place. And I was speaking with Tom before we started this episode about what you've cultivated in your community here. Because as I was doing a little bit of research of like how you post and what you say, it's a lot of seriousness, but having fun. <laughs> yeah. And I think that it's very important that people know that in fitness, that it can be serious and fun at the same time. Like, the way that I look at what you just said is being serious when you're under load. Mm -hmm. If you have a heavy ass kettlebell in your hand or a barbell, you got to you gotta take that smile off of your face. Yeah, you can't joke around. You can't joke you around. You know what I mean? Um, 
but then after like oh shit that was that was wild um a lot of people like like to talk when they're under a bench press right. and i'm like uh, that was not the time exactly yeah, yeah. and if they are they're probably not pushing as much as they could be no yeah no. but to them it's fine they that's right. that's it's what they wanted it to be and right. i had to learn to be like i'm not trying to project what i wanted for you you know, I have to understand that this is sort of your place too, and this is sort of your interpretation as well. At right. the same time, I'm giving you the program. Let's get to work. Let's go. Right. Yeah. Why do you Why do you think that is the culture that you've cultivated here, whether or not that was pre-planned or not? Like, why is it such a fun place to train here, but also you have the identity of this is the place where we make the gains and we build the muscle, and at the same time, let's have some fun. Why is that? I I can't pinpoint, and I've actually thought about this for a while. I can't pinpoint why exactly like that is what it is. It's sort of like it it, it is very inclusive. Like we mm-hmm. allow anybody to walk through the door. We allow all the weirdos come in, hmm. and I'm like growing up being weird, very shy, and very um, you know introverted. Like I had a very sort of creative mind and I like a lot of people that want to come in and just feel like it's okay. Understand it's going to be hard, but just be who you are. I really don't care who you are. The weights, the iron, it doesn't discriminate. Uh, You know what I mean? It tells the truth all the time. Like work with me in doing this. I wanted to make it easily accessible for you. Right. For anybody. Mm -hmm. I am not... um, gatekeeping this thing this thing belongs to everybody right and if you are willing to put in the work yeah i'll come in train with me uh but you know take the training seriously don't take yourself seriously like it is what it is like fitness should not be a personality trait is what i say to a bunch of people that will that will trigger some people right i meant it Right. I think w- with what you said at the end is fitness is not a personality trait that a lot of people are very serious into it, create an identity around it, mm-hmm. which I definitely did when I first started working out. I am too. I'm guilty of it as well. So right. I get it. And as you learn and as you go through phases of training people who are just regular people, you understand throughout the years that this is much more than banging weights. Mm-hmm. Right. They don't really care to hit a 225 bench press, a 315 deadlift, a 405 squat. Actually, those are backwards in terms of numbers. But <laughs> but it's it's very interesting to see as I get to learn about more people that it, it's much more. It's much more like what my podcast name is. It's mm-hmm. beyond the exercise, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, that was like a statement, right? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was like, yes. What do you say on that? <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Where We're going to just... Can you just move that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going this way. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you got it, brother. Yeah. All right, so kind of want to go through some of the questions that I've had for you. Shoot. Like right here before I came um, and I prepared a little bit for you. Some of, Most of it we actually tackled already, which is really good. Oh, that noise like, went away. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, brother. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing that I saw as I'm scrolling down through Instagram is I saw the Filipino flag. again. Mm-hmm. obviously, I'm Filipino too, so we Let's have like, this kind of uh, connection. And... I really wanted to ask you about what it means to you to be a Filipino American business owner in the fitness industry and yeah, what emotions and how does that feel for you? Hmm. Oh, um, that is a very loaded question. Yeah. Uh, and not, not in a bad way. I, yeah. I, it's something I don't, I'm going to be honest, like it's something I don't really think about as much. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm that, you know, it's that woke statement. I don't see color. Um, right. But mm-hmm. it's sort of like I, I treat people as people. I see you coming in and I like, did, did I ever consider myself as like, hey, it's a big deal that you're a Filipino business owner. Um, I don't really put much thought into it. I do want more filipinos to be more entrepreneurial right i do want them to sort of explore more mm-hmm. uh like find your passion uh and, and and pursue things and uh be okay to fail at things too not be afraid of rejection and just like 
keep pushing through. Like you're you're doing a podcast. I think it's the coolest thing. Mm. Like uh, Filipino Americans that are like into that want to do something else that's not in the health industry, uh, and there's nothing wrong with it. If you are a nurse mm -hmm. and your family is nurses and they're, you know, so on and so forth, I it's okay. If that's yeah. what you love to do right. and you can honestly look in the mirror and be okay with that, cool. Good for you. But like everybody else is like, there's, um, I, I do feel there's a lot of Filipino Americans among us and um, uh, maybe the next generation, but definitely the generation before us felt like, well, I go to school. I, I gotta I gotta be a nurse and then mm -hmm. and then I gotta do that and I was like I think there is some people who had to cut their dream short mm -hmm. and um, if there's anything I could have done is sort of like at least demonstrate and show like take I took a risk you know I took a risk was it scary absolutely mm -hmm. I was scared shitless in pursuing this I did not know how I was gonna make it after two months. So if anyone is able to sort of like, they see myself, that guy sort of looks like me, even though I'm light skin, mm. um, <laughs> like he can do it. Like, like, I like I, 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 I could do something too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And even if it's fitness, even if it's like art or, or, or whatever, like we're, there's talent in, in Filipino Americans everywhere. Right. I think like if, if I, help somebody to sort of like at least think about other avenues of pursuing you know and then uh, then i made it i did my job right yeah good i saw you think a little bit there and kind of hit home being filipino and being a businessman and is there more to that like was was there a lot of was there a lot of resistance in the beginning when you we're trying to build what you have right now? Uh, uh, there are things that are like uh, going to school, going to college. I know the people who did the nursing program. I know my family. Uh, uh, so I, I came with my uh, parents. So mm -hmm. born in the Philippines, right. immigrated to Jersey City when I was around three or four. And, um, you know, it's a it's a plan that you got to sort of follow in a ways. Maybe it wasn't implicitly said, but it was sort of like everybody sort of felt it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I never had any interest. I never wanted to take any any of that stuff. Uh, I, I, I get squeamish with blood, you know. I feel the exact yeah. same way. <laughs> so exact same so way. I was like, I don't think it's for me. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I wish like I had, you know, nobody... I feel like this is sort of like therapy. Like no one asked me, "Hey, Josh, what do you want to do?" Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a little, when I was younger, in my early twenties, and I was like, I, I, "I don't know. Um, I know what I enjoy doing. I like working out. You know, I like you know physical activities. I like sports. I like martial arts. Um, I just love being active, and I think that resonated to me. And did I? I never thought to myself this was an avenue I was going to pursue. I never thought having my own brick and mortar gym facility in Jersey city in the town I grew up was mm. ever a, was ever on the table for me. And that sort of manifested itself in my uh, mid to late twenties. Mm. So that's, yeah, that's so good, brother. It's like you, you push beyond the typical or the stereotypical beliefs of what a traditional family household should be like a doctor or a successful lawyer mm -hmm. or anything in that field and once you step out of that fields that people think that you should be doing it's a lot more resistance and saying like oh you shouldn't be doing that you should do what your uncle did or what your dad did mm -hmm. it's a little bit discouraging because I'm sure that in anywhere in the world, we have our different passions and goals in life. And honestly, most of the time as we're living and growing up with our parents is that we kind of get trapped in this idea that this is what we should be doing because this is what we've always been doing, which I want to segue with that idea of in terms of working out and fitness and, and you can see how a lot of people have influences with their family. The way that I see it is when I was growing up in my family, nobody was really healthy and working on their body. I lived in the Philippines for around seven years. And 
somebody saying I'm gonna go to the gym and work on my health was pretty much non-existent. Yeah, you're you're weird at that point. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. So what if based on your experience in the Philippines, actually? So wh- why do you think that is? Why why do you think in the Philippines it's not much of a goal? For people, an idea that you need to take care of your body by lifting weights and eating healthy. Conversely, when you move to America, it's almost marketed in your face right away. It's a fantastic question, and I feel like I—I uh, <laughs> I was a history minor at one point. Oh, uh, so that helps. Uh, yeah, no. So understanding like the history of like the Philippines and Philippines American uh, relations mm-hmm. and the. Um, I was going deep if I ever, if I ever oh, uh, go off do. topic, but like, I feel please like, do. you know, we've had how many years of uh, like 500 years of Spanish colonization. Uh, we got taken over by um, the Americans mm-hmm. and then the Japanese invaded. And then all of a sudden this, we've only had, a, I don't know, three or four, five decades to really find our identity. And we're mm-hmm. still very young into finding what that is. Right. Um, for the most part, our culture and our history is of being like having that colonized mentality, mm. like not having that like strength to overcome, to like be strong and not afraid to be strong mm. and to, to say what you now. Now, I, I don't, I don't want to say there, there are, you know, the Philippines has a long history of revolutions and people are standing up for themselves in, in different generations even you know centuries ago mm-hmm. um so i'm not saying it's not it's it's that's the, that's not the blanket statement i want to say but it's sort of like with a lot of family that maybe you know and i know and there's a lot of people who just very very passive and it's this right. this asian stigma uh not just with filipinos but with other asians who just seem very hey stay very quiet don't attract too much attention mm. stay you know what i mean just you know like and, and and it's a negative connotation but it does hit uh people that this thing is actually happening and so that's just like yeah why 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 work out why lift weights you know you should just go focus on your studies go go read and be this because that's what your grandfather wanted mm-hmm. or, or stuff like that and I think it's like um, we haven't had much time to explore outside of that mentality to like, you know, like generate our creative juices, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, So now do, do you think that any of those ideas has influenced your idea of training in the first half of your career versus the second half of your year of of your career in fitness in terms of so i would assume that in the beginning stages of when you're a personal trainer you the first thing i would assume that a lot of people think is you know just lift some weights build some muscle lose some fat eat Mm -hmm. um eat well and then as you're moving into your career where you're a little bit more experienced and you're dealing with a lot of people that the ideas that you have from your motherland as being like, you know, an immigrant or living outside of the world Mm. or living in a different part of the world that doesn't really encapsulate fitness versus when you were now in America and now have your own gym and now trying to cultivate a different kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. Because I would assume that you're here every day and you're probably spending more time in the gym with a lot of different people who live around the area, like you Mm -hmm. mentioned, versus when you were back home where you're surrounded by all the Filipinos. Right. So how is that, how, if it did have any influence on you of like your training career or just how does that look like as a whole? No, definitely my training career has definitely like changed a lot of, uh, perspectives Mm -hmm. and like, um, in my younger years when I was in school, um, I mainly, I mean, it's no surprise, but I stuck with all the Filipinos and, right. and, and it was always just one track mind. We would all go to church and, mm. you know, we would have, we'd, we'd come together for Christmas and 
whatever. Um, but then later on, like I uh, start my career in personal training. Mm-hmm. I started in Hoboken, and then I sort of communicate with uh, different groups of people. Mm-hmm. Then I moved to Jersey City, and it's something else also too. Mm-hmm. So different cultures, and I and I love that I get to work and train in Jersey City, which is the melting pot of America. You'll have many, you have broad ranges of ethnicities, cultures, nationalities, and 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 different ways of thinking, which I think is is the best thing about it mm-hmm. too. And it's sort of sort of validated in my thoughts. Like I, there's something that was always inside of me that I just, I wanted to do something else, mm. you know? And uh, the people that I resonated with are people who are just entrepreneurial, right? who are very, um, hey, I got this new app that I'm creating or I, 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 I'm starting up this company and I'm doing all this thing. Like, yes, there's a lot of nine to five people, but you're, you're also going to come across people who are just very, creative and just forward thinking and i'm like that's that's the coolest thing man tell me your story i want to hear about that and it you know it changed like sort of my training aspect like i felt like my when i started training it was very one-dimensional mm. do this 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 and then later on it was like no no many many roads lead to rome so that's you know and when you have that one way of training and you you see all this diversity with people and it shaped the way that now you train is that a big reason why now you have all these different modalities of training yeah i really think like anybody who would pursue this field i would just say open your eyes to um a lot of different modalities um Go to that uh, barbell certification that we went to. Mm-hmm. Go do USAW weightlifting. Try the RKC if you want to learn uh, kettlebells. You want to do sandbags, learn that. Um, even some things that I signed up for a lot of things. I'm like, that was a waste of time too. And, right. You know. Um, but like, as long as you get to explore, network, mm-hmm. um, tr- talk to different people in the industry and figure out different ways, it's... I would like to uh, compare it to someone who is seasoned in traveling. Mm. If you travel and you experience different cultures, you take a little bit of that, and you, or or you get a li- the, just a different perspective. And like, okay, I understand why you do stuff like this way, you know. Like, oh, you like to do West Side. You okay? I I get why you do stuff like that. Oh, you 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 just want to do like strong first kettlebell. Like, I, I get why you do that. That's that's cool. Um, but the more you expand, it's like, oh, you pick and choose what you like, and then you sort of create your own little thing. It's the uh, Bruce Lee quote is, um, take what is useful, reject what's useless, and then adapt and make what is uniquely your own thing. And that's what that's what this is. This mm-hmm. IPA, the gym that I started, that my team created, is its own thing. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't tell you what it is. I don't know what it is, but it is our own. It's very unique to this area to, you know what I mean? Like you won't find this in the city, I guarantee you. Right. So, And what you're talking about, all these different certifications that people can take, you're not really just specifically talking about people who want to work in this industry, but also for people who are just generally wanting to have a fitness lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, cool. I thought I was going to get more out of you from that, but yeah, so yes. <laughs> oh, no. Um, um, so so I think the I think the way that I see it is with all these certifications, because yes, it comes with like a stamp at the end when you take these classes. And mm-hmm. it, I think with that, it discourages people who are not skilled in training to not take these classes because one, it's geared towards teaching somebody on how to teach it to somebody else. Correct. But what I really see with that and how valuable that could be for the regular person who is training is if you can teach something to somebody else, more than likely you have a really good understanding yourself. 100%. It's like the phrase of if you can teach, a fi- uh, if you can explain it to a fifth grader or a five-year-old, then you really know what you're talking about. I, I 100% agree. I think like this um, occurs 
especially trainers that are up and coming, I would tell them, if you want to teach something, the best way to learn it is to teach it to other people. Mm -hmm. And you'll sort of pick some nuances off that. And you sort of like, oh, like I get it more. Like people absorb differently. Some people absorb through a book or absorb like, you know, uh, visually. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you teach it to somebody, yeah, you're going to get it. I do. I do appreciate those that are not trainers, that are not physicians, but do take a course because they want it personally for themselves. Right. And I'm like, selfishly, and I think that's kind of a cool thing. Like, that's so cool, man. You're just a, you know, an accountant and you you took the certification. I think that's the coolest thing. Like, you took it for your own personal growth. Yeah. And you took something, like, you, 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 there's no ROI from this in your career Mm -hmm. that you're going to benefit from. But you still took the chance and 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 explored and and you know you see where it takes you. I think it, like it, it opens your eyes to other things too. Right. I think like other trainers should expand their scope of not just modalities but other types of training, like yeah. business, learn business, learn economics, learn other languages. I think that's cool too. Yeah. It's so good that you said that at the end because that's where I want to get to. Mm-hmm. Of what do you think that a lot of trainers? need to start talking about more than just teaching their clients how to lift um they need to learn how to talk to people (laughs) um i can't teach that i can teach you the x's and o's i can teach you about sets reps and like uh the conjugate system i could teach you periodization and all that but at the end of the day you got to have people to buy in. Right. And how you get them to buy in is you got to learn how to communicate with people and meet people where they're at. Like I will hire people if they have a psychology degree. I was like, you are perfect for this. <laughs> that is, perfect. you know, you're, you, you know, spot on. You have an economics degree. There's a lot that uh, training and the human body can relate to when it comes to economics. Cause if you understand economically, you can understand like, uh, rest, you can understand muscle growth, you can understand uh, periodization, linear periodization, progressive overload, you can learn that. You got to learn outside of that stuff. Uh, um, um, there was one, there was, there was a few, there was like a, 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 it was a thing I wanted to write. What are the top five um, court like uh, degrees that I would hire that's not training related? And those would be, those would be a few of them too. Nice. Yeah, I got to figure out what the other one was. One was dance. I think dance was a good thing too because dance requires a lot of... Um, they understand the uh, concept of repetition right. and skill acquisition. Right. And uh, just being frustrated in learn, in, uh, in in getting things wrong too. Mm. So. And also observation, I would say, right? Like I, I think as, as a personal trainer, uh, being a personal trainer that needs to learn on how to observe people better aside from, you know, just by how they live. Like the one thing that I've really been focusing on in the past few years of training my clients because I've had them for three, four years now mm-hmm. and nothing has changed. I, I know I, I literally have their program embedded in my brain mm-hmm. and now I find other ways of how to encourage them, right? It's it's being personable is being able how to observe these different people that have different quirks and different ways of lifting and running their life through fitness. Mm -hmm. So I I love what you said earlier about you have to be able to meet people where they're at because in the beginning time, in the beginning stages of me personal training, I would just give everybody everything to the textbook, right? To the T of like, you should learn on how to bench press, but you know how you need to keep your shoulders down. Yeah. You need to learn how to brace. And after a while, when you're training people, like they really don't give a shit about that. Anymore. No, they tune out. They, they, this is not, this is not their thing. Um, I, I really think you got to find uh, the best way to connect with somebody is to connect with them emotionally. Mm-hmm. It's not, just like you got to find something and it takes a coach's eyes and I, I i'm the same i was the same way and i'm like this is the program do it or else i was like their asian parent i was like do this like call me when you're a doctor no um it was just like <laughs> sorry i um i really think like you gotta and and, and some things that I had to learn like as recently as like a, like a year or two ago where I just sort of have to 
I'm learning a little bit of empathy, and mm-hmm. that's the thing. It, it it helps when, like, for me, and I'm open in saying this. Like, I'm in, I'm in therapy. I think like therapy is good, and mm-hmm. therapy is good because sort of like I don't get everything in other things, mm-hmm. but I have to sort of like see where I'm at and sort of express my emotions in real time. And I think that's what it is for some people too when it comes to training. Um, are they gonna look the same year after year? sure are they like just happy to see you that too you know it, it you you get to pay the bills uh but they come in here and it, if it's something that they like to do i think it's a net positive for them and ultimately what i found out in group classes and this is hard to hear for a lot of personal trainers uh results is they're not the primary thing mm. <laughs> they they you know and it and it's a tough pill to swallow when you're a personal trainer cuz I am, and I'm sure you are, we're results oriented. 100%. I want to get you to your goals because you told me that. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, they just want to be in a place that they feel safe. They get to express who they are, how they are. Mm-hmm. And um, they that's what it is. Right. That, that, that's, that's basically is. And if they're with there with a community of other people, that's cool too. Right. You just want to be able to help people to feel better, right? It's, uh, what I I love what you just said because that's how most of my training sessions go now is you, when you work with somebody for so long, they're not always going to be on top of their game the way that they were the first time. It gets a little dull. It gets a little stale. They think that they're very complacent. But I always remind them that in some way, shape, or form, everything that you're doing in this journey to whatever goal you have, you still have to appreciate the steps in between. Sure. It's kind of like saying when somebody wants to be able to lose 20 pounds in a certain amount of time frame, and then life smacks them in the head and they only lose 10 pounds and they're so beaten up by not being able to lose 20 pounds, it, it doesn't really matter because you still lost the 10 pounds. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that I love when I'm training somebody and sometimes I can go on a long tangent and like it it almost comes into like a therapy session. Right. Um, But it's like you as personal trainers, I think we have to really hone in on highlighting the effort that majority of our trainees are doing. Mm -hmm. Like even encouraging somebody like, Hey, you got your workout in, even though you did three exercises out of the 15 that I had planned today, like you still got it in. But also uh, on the other side of that, you as a personal trainer, you also have to have the responsibility to not let people slack off. And that's where I think that's a big part where I'm trying to solve now is how can I be better in encouraging my clients to constantly work on their fitness regardless if it feels stale and complacent it's that is the hardest part too because stale and complacency will affect everybody it'll it'll affect Mm -hmm. you it'll affect me too because it'll be a sort of complacency with that too it is a little bit of a rut and some people it's really hard to to really like drag into here it's like bringing a horse to water it's And, and I get that. And some people are just mentally not there where you are mm-hmm. in order to get to where you are when it comes to bodybuilding or powerlifting requires right. discipline, right. requires getting up in the morning, eating more things than you than you want to. And it, it requires this whole discipline that these people who, you know, um, personal training is a luxury. So mm-hmm. if they're able to 100%. afford you, they have somewhat of a... Um, I wouldn't say nice upbringing too, but like they got things that they got from working hard and, you know, achieving that thing. Right. But now they're hiring you Hey, get me to this goal also. Right. But their physical battery, emotional battery has been used up mainly for that main thing. Right. Or if they have a family, it's used up on that thing. And by the time they get to you, they are drained. They are at 5%, mm. you know? So I was like, hey. And, you know, you'll get your A-types too. I was like, no, no, I need this. I need this. Right. I'll meet you 4.30 in the morning. I got right. you, you know? Um, but for the most part, a lot of people, they just, 
you know, hey, 20 pounds is, every time that anyone gives you that, oh, I need to lose 20 pounds goal, I'm like, all right. Yeah, um, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to promise you anything. Uh, but like, I, I get what you're trying to do and it's going to, it, what it takes to get there is something you probably have never done and you're not ready to, and you want me to get you there in like six weeks. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, no, we need to have a, we need to have a serious, honest conversation. Right. Um, cause I'm sure there's trainers out there that's going to give you some bullshit and they're going to lie to you and like, yeah, yeah, no, no, I could get you there. Yeah. Uh, but the, the real ones, no, it's just like. Yeah, no, nah, nah, yeah. like, look, we'll do what we can. Right. You know, I love that approach. That's kind of what I do now when somebody's coming on board new with me, uh, which doesn't happen quite often now because I've been with my clients and my schedule's all booked. Mm-hmm. But the way that I see it when somebody asks me, how do I get to this goal or this is the goal that I want to get, how long it's going to take me, I always say it depends, right? You could be the most dedicated person in this world towards the goal that you have and you can achieve it in the next six weeks. But then a lot of people who don't know what goes beyond the exercises is that there's a lot of groundwork and foundational stuff that you need to do and learn before this comes to fruition, right? It's the one, one story that I love to always say when I first started working out was... When, when I first started working out, I worked at this gym, 24 Fitness, as a uh, front desk employee, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm in the in the break room, and one of the personal trainers comes in, and he sees me. I'm working out hard all the time. And then he looks at my uh, Tupperware, because I, I bring in food, um, just like all Filipinos do. Yeah. And I have <laughs> my Tupperware. Yeah. yeah. So I have a, a, little, a little section of rice, and then I have a big section of chicken. Mm. And then he was like, he's like, dude, are you, are you going to lift? You've been lifting heavy. Why are you not fueling yourself? I was like, what do you mean? I have it all right here. He's like, that's all the carbs you're going to eat? And I point at the chicken <laughs> and I'm like, this is a lot of carbs, bro. And that was at that moment he started laughing. And I think that's one of the biggest moments where I knew that I didn't know jack shit regardless of me working out, right? Mm-hmm. That, that And how I'm relating this to what I just said is, is, is the foundational groundwork that you need to know. Like you... Simply, you need to know basic stuff. Like fitness is not hard. It's just knowing the right stuff and constantly doing them over time. Yeah. So, yeah, the reason why I want to share that is just a lot of people need to focus on all the other stuff as well. And you can get to your goal as long as you put in the work and and listen to the right people. Right. right? And, And as you're talking about earlier as well, as some trainers will bullshit you. And they'll tell you what you want to hear, I think comes from a place of fear of not potentially getting that client or losing that client. Correct, yes. And what I've learned as well is people will respect you more for being honest with them and telling them what they don't want to hear because they value honesty and know that even through that moment in time, it's hard to hear and that pill is very hard to swallow that when they go home and they sit down and they truly know that you care and told them what they needed to hear rather than what they wanted to hear i think you build so much more respect with somebody 100 percent. i think it's a tough skill especially early on when you start out Uh oh yeah wait let me let me fix that right i know, go ahead Okay, so yeah, cut. So if you're only just listening to this podcast, my camera died. I don't know why, but it has a lot of battery. But anyway, not important. Back to what we were saying. Uh, do you know where we left off? Yeah, no, I was stating that um, it's a tough, like especially early on, a trainer, uh, they're very green and they want to like get all these clients and their schedule is so wide open, you know, and they just want to get in. And I was like, hey, uh, I want to lose weight for this wedding. I got to fit into this dress. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I'll get you there. I am the one that's going to get you there. Six weeks. Follow my thing and all that. And, and it's understandable. Um, I get it. It's a hustle. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying, you know, I haven't. It's, it's, I feel like I've been there myself. I 100%. get it. But I feel like it's trying to. 
people people will respect you right. if you are honest with them and if they go move on to somebody else i don't think you would have wanted that client anyways right. you know they just want to be told good things mm -hmm. and um I'm guilty of not giving enough validation even to my clients and even in my classes mm -hmm. myself. I'm notorious for that. I'm like, oh, yeah. uh, one time uh, I had a uh, a member of the gym say to somebody, it was like, oh, Josh said, this was the first time in three years, he actually said good job oh. to me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, did I say that? Uh, I must have oh. slipped out. Uh. <laughs> you know, like like a lot. Of <laughs> so I, I, I get that. I get that like tough love of, approach right but I, I i do think we need to have an honor, honest conversation with our clients mm -hmm. we deeply need to have an honest conversation with ourselves mm -hmm. a lot of times and i'm sure you've experienced this right clients will come to you they'll say i don't get it i did everything you told me to blah 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 blah. i did all this stuff and i just wish like look guilty until proven innocent i want to do a daily audit i wish i could be there the other 23 hours in the day because mm -hmm. you say you're having all this and i don't believe you <laughs> i don't buy it i don't i don't i don't buy it and i like i i you know take a picture next time right don't write in my fitness but write take a picture next right. time um like the diet is so hard right. it's so hard to get and, and you know we have our things that we like you know right i think that diet is the number one most important thing that we have no control over. So I've given up on diet. Mm -hmm. um, what, I, what I do instead is I want to, I want you, the client, to keep track of your sleep. Are we good? Yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, I see what's happening. What's going, what happened? So the temperature of... Is it too hot here? Yeah, it's too high. But we'll roll with it. We okay. have these we other, these the things. iPhones one. All right. Um, so... Uh, yeah, what I was stating is that, um, the, uh, what was I? Oh, okay. Diet. I, 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 yeah, I don't keep track of diet anymore. I say, look, my main thing is just don't eat like an asshole. It's like, what does that mean? It's like, you know what that means. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I was like, what's very crucial is sleep and steps. Mm -hmm. And I think like everybody has a Fitbit now. And I think like if you have a, 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 I don't like daily goals either. I like, I like, um, weekly totals instead. Mm -hmm. Like everybody thinks 10,000 hours a day. What happens if you don't, you know, how about 70,000 70, steps a week? Can you get to that? Right. I think that's doable. Mm -hmm. It's like, even if I don't get 10,000 one day, I can sort of make it up in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get my 10,000 today, but I'll, I'll make it up here. And at the end of seven days, I got my 70,000. And that way, if you don't reach your 10,000 a day, you're not considered a failure. So there's more of a positive outlook on that. There's no sense of defeat. So, um, and then when it comes to sleep, hey, look, eight hours is not realistic. Anybody that lives in the Northeast, <laughs> it's not realistic. You more like six. You know, um, I say aim for seven, six and a half to seven. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then even if you don't get it in a day and it does affect you the next day, you know, uh, 49 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Get Give me um, 49 hours a week. Uh, is that right? So, yeah. So? Okay, good. So. Now we just, we can only count to 10. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't even count to 10. <laughs> I lose after two. There you go. I was like, what number are you on? <laughs> 14. I had you at six. All right. Um so my clients hate me for that yeah i tell them don't expect i you, I'm, i don't count yeah that's that's what i say you so, count on your own what what do you do with so for me when, when i get distracted from counting mm -hmm. i'm really looking at form and i'm very detailed with form like i look at toes i look at heels i mm -hmm. look at where the hip crease is going i'm looking where the load is mm -hmm. and then i lose i lose the number so i kind of just gave up on that what do you what are you distracted by when you're not counting correctly? Uh, one, I don't count. Okay. I, I like I legitimately I tell people from the very beginning. I was like, I want you to get to twelve TRX rows. That's probably like one of, one of the first movements I, I teach is a squat and a, and a row. Okay. And maybe we'll go look at your push up because I think your push nine out of ten push ups are trash. Um, but also like, was that twelve? 
No, 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 I believe you. If you say it's twelve, then it's twelve. And right. if and if you and if they're not doing twelve, they're only cheating themselves. Right, right. Like, like, wait, what, what do you, what do you hire me for? You know what I mean? Um, I'm looking at everything. I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I look at, I look at the whole picture or whatever, and and that's more important than the than the reps. Mm-hmm. People think it's just the reps. It's not the reps. It's the it's quality over quantity. I want like a good solid five reps over twelve reps. Right. But at the end of the day, they want to feel like they want to work out. So for the client i think volume is they think it's here but we're not there yet i'm not trying to like preach my gospel day one Mm -hmm. you know i'm letting them slowly buy in to what i want them to get into that which includes the sleep which includes the steps uh and for like at some times i will tell them yeah no eat like protein you know uh have some vegetables uh yeah don't get trashed uh, in the weekends, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Don't smoke. I feel like that's an obvious one. Right. But a lot of these people, like, they know that stuff, so I'm not trying to baby them. So the right. nutritional stuff, the stretching stuff, that people's mobility just sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, the water intake, yep. like, everybody knows that. And it's just like, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse if I try to say that day one. 100%. So I never say them, I never tell them that. I was like, you know what to do. You're right. not, you're, you're, you're 43 years old. You know what to do. Right. All right. I'm not your mother. Right. All right. Just get your seven hours of sleep. Say your prayers. Go to sleep. Um, don't go out. Nothing good p- happens Past after one? after 10 o'clock. 10. Oh, my God. Uh, how old are you? Uh, 29 now. 29, Jesus. That's I, I sleep at 9.30 every Holy day. Sh- so um, I'm just more... Yeah, no, I don't... I, I, I can't hang anymore, I'm telling you. <laughs> I feel like an old I man. Not when, you get, when you get to my age, <laughs> stuff like that, I feel like 29... <laughs> like like two drinks and i am wrecked for the next day and that's when and that's when it started happening for me right. too so that's when i started uh, hey liquid iv what a great invention let's let's do that right i mean yeah. i used to drink so hard when i was 21 and i still would be pushing prs but at a certain point I and mean, when you get as old as that when you get as old as i am you, that just doesn't slide anymore yeah don't listen to trainers under the age of 26 Ooh. and and i i Ooh. i yes i understand that might be offensive to a lot of people and i apologize but there are certain experience and i don't want to be like the old man yelling at clouds mm-hmm. but i do feel that after a certain point you sort of empathize with your older clients that are in their 40s that are in their 50s and i'm like yeah you know what? The body does slow down. It's no joke. Right. It's it's real. It's once you had a couple of injuries, Oof. that shit is real. Like, yeah, no, nah, I uh, maybe I should stretch every day. Maybe I should warm up before I play basketball mm-hmm. at this beer league. You know, everybody has strained uh, ACLs. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, that's not gonna be me. I'm gonna do my strength training. I'm gonna do my stretching. I'm gonna drink my water. I'm gonna live this healthy lifestyle so I can like play ball. You know, right. so, but, <laughs> and I, yeah, but if you look, I started, I started at 24, um, keep grinding, get as much information as you can and listen to older people, get off of TikTok and don't listen to those doctors or trainers on TikTok. Mm-hmm. All right. Not yeah. on TikTok at least. Right. Not on TikTok, man. Just like, look, anything that, that was good, that was ever invented was already invented. Right. All right. So, um. Stay away from AI, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> I'm so I'm oh. such an old man. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's because you don't know how to use AI. No, it's just I don't trust it. I watch enough movies to like, yeah. you know. Oh. I feel like um, AI does take away a lot of jobs. Like I'm not worried that a AI can you uh, Chat GPT create me a strength program. Oh, hundred like, percent. Like, like I I know what I'm good at. I know yeah. what I'm capable of. If they can show me that they can make a good strength program, that's amazing. Right. But um, the human body is unique and individual. Right. Like our fingerprints are. Mm-hmm. So you gotta create something that's sort of different from person to person. Right. And AI can't do that. AI cannot have that conversation. They can't have that. Um, like hey assessment that daily assessment how do we how do we get here all right yeah no (laughs) we got here from speaking about being old being old yeah and not listening to uh new technology that yeah yeah no stay away from tiktok delete it right away keep our jobs in america
<laughs> hot take. Sorry, was that a hot take? Yeah, I didn't yeah. know how to top that one off, so <laughs> I just froze. Um, but I want to go back to a couple more things before um, wrapping up here. Is you talk about injuries, right? Mm-hmm. And I had a little thought in my head as I'm coming here because the last time I visited you, my shoulder was banged up, but I also wanted to keep up with you guys here. Yeah, I remember you told me. Yeah, yeah. and and like I remember when I used to be able to keep up with the big boys, like mm. even people who were twice my size, I would be outlifting them. And I came to the realization as I'm sitting here next to all these normal people who are not trainers that don't do this for a living. And then I see you doing like a Turkish get up with, was it 44 kg or something? I'm like, God damn, that thing is ridiculous. That, that thing is ridiculously heavy and you're ridiculously strong. So what I'm getting to is about injuries is how somebody can check themselves and being able to humble themselves during an injury and getting back to where their strength is um like how can somebody let me let me have a a a more clear question is how can somebody conceptualize on admitting that they are injured and how they can mentally process of not trying to get back um that is a very great question and i don't think there's an easy answer or one answer to 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 summarize you know what the best thing for them to do is i think like injury is for a lot of people sometimes is a gift mm-hmm. sometimes 100%. injury tells you to slow down a little bit one thousand um, percent tells you you know what got you injured sometimes injuries are just freak accidents and there's nothing that could have happened mm-hmm. but for the most there are instances and i think it's for the most part they are just dumb injuries mm-hmm. and like you knew it was dumb but i think it's to everyone's personal um it's their own personal story right that or journey that's gonna let them figure out on their own and some people don't and that's the sad realization about it um i've i've been injured before and i realize oh geez okay i don't like to do that people who keep getting injured they realize they got to slow down Mm -hmm. and sometimes there's a mental block which inhibits their training or whatever but those that are just very go 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 they have to um like push themselves or sort of like keep up pace with other people they got to realize i don't think it's worth it Uh, Mm -hmm. and that's you know i'm at 35 i realize like yeah there's some strong people and i think like a lot of these companies they like to showcase strong people of course they do um but I do think it's to the detriment of the vast majority majority of the public. Mm-hmm. I think we do want to see some people that are in their late 30s or in their 40s that are sort of doing smart things. Um, and these are companies that I even respect myself. And these are companies that I bought from. And they showcase some people that are just grabbing like ridiculous heavy weights, doing some dumb stuff. <sighs> Yeah. Like, uh, and, and it's the stuff that's going to get the clicks and the likes. And, and look, I get it. Look, the clicks and the likes, we have this um, dopamine response every time. It's like, oh, wow, this thing is trending. People like this clean into a zercher, whatever, mm-hmm. and it smacks you in the forearms. And then, like, um, great. You know, it doesn't get any clicks. Like, uh, someone getting into their first pull-up. You know, like they get their first pull up and we should all celebrate. And I think that's that's oh, fantastic. Yeah. Like 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 a mother who gave birth and is just getting back into it. And they did, did one or two chin ups. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think we should uh, celebrate these small these small victories mm-hmm. or whatever, as opposed to people who are juggling kettlebells, balancing and whatever, doing whatever silly strength stuff, balancing on. You know what I mean? I want to. I want to like just before I rant on the whole fitness industry. <laughs> yeah, I because I am the deep in that. Uh, I am the. Oh, I could definitely go all day. I am the anti-influencer. Like I, I really think like right. there's um, a responsibility that we all should have. One thousand percent into guiding our clients, the people that we influence, 
to guide them into the safe path, not getting things that's going to injure them and destroy their um, their livelihood, their work, uh, you know, their bank account. Then you got to pay for surgery. You know what I mean? Like it's, at the end of the day, it's not worth it. The no, the one thing that I think about when you say uh, people are doing exercises for the clicks on the on, on for the gram or for the TikTok, it always takes me back to this image of people wanting to squat, wanting to barbell squat on a Bosu ball. Mm-hmm. Like it just doesn't make sense. Like sure, you can argue that the instability of the surface and now your feet and your your toes are constantly looking for, um, for stable surface but the risk of that it like blows out and outweighs the reward so sure it might look fancy it looks hard but why don't we just encourage people of focusing on doing a regular squat and then maybe after that telling them to stand on one leg and close their eyes so you can focus on balance it's the likes it's the likes it's the uh again it's a dopamine response you know like for them these people you know, they're not athletes. They don't have a sport to compete in. So the only sport that they get to play is social media. It's the game of social media. Insta Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I coach uh, high school volleyball and I was like, I'm not doing this stupid shit. You know what the goal is? The goal is to to win the trophy. That's mm-hmm. it. I train jujitsu guys. I got a guy who's going to do the world championships uh, in a couple weeks. That's our goal. I can't let you do like silly silly things and get you hurt Mm -hmm. um sometimes the sport is dangerous enough the last thing you need is something just for the like uh for the for the likes for the clicks Mm -hmm. for the clout um at the end of the day you know what i get it you're 23 28 no offense but like at the I'm end of the, so at good. the end of the day you're going to be 35 and you're going to be yelling at clouds and it's going to be hard to wake up in the morning and uh I know some people who got injured um doing stupid gym stuff mm-hmm. and they had to sit on the bench for like 4 to 6 months and if you have an active lifestyle there's nothing more depressing than inactivity uh, losing all your gains, um, gaining weight. I mean, it's not fun, like being unhealthy and not doing the things that you love to do. Mm-hmm. I think the gym is fun. I think it's great. I want everybody to, I want to share this passion to everybody and try different modalities, try different things. But at the end of the day, get strong, be safe. Right. You know. Yeah, that's uh, one thing that I want to end this off with is like what we're talking about injuries is is letting the ego out, right? Letting, leaving the ego out the window. Mm-hmm. Because the way that I hurt myself back, uh, I want to say six years ago, was, you know, I, I would consider myself very strong at the point, at the time where my total, so my squat bench deadlift total at 150 pounds was like 1,100 at that time. So I was like really cranking out weight. But I remember this one time I was just, on the clouds i felt so strong and i wanted to show off and i just loaded this trap bar deadlift and i've never done trap bar like after 315 before but i just did barbell for like 405 and i was like "Ah, i want to go you think it should translate yeah Yeah. i was like i'm gonna do it right now and i I do it and i lift it and i was like oh fuck i i come down and my back starts like it's just it, it starts feeling hot and as I go home, sleep, and I wake up, and I was like, I fucked myself up. And uh, the one thing, the one thing that I take away from that, that I use to be very aware for my clients, is not allowing somebody to get over their head. That sometimes people are, you get those type A type of people where they're just like, let's do it. I can do it. I can do it. And sometimes like mind over matter, sure. But also as a personal trainer and and um, thinking beyond the exercise is to be fully aware that, hey, sometimes you need to tell somebody like you need to slow down. And, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because what you said earlier that when an injury happens is normally a signal of the universe of telling you mm-hmm. like, hey, bro, you're doing way too much. You need to slow down before you hurt yourself. 
So that's like one story for me of how I've learned how to slow down. And then I eventually hurt myself again from overtraining twice. And now I'm like, cool. Like I've had enough injuries in my life and I don't want that happening anymore. So before we go to the final segment of this podcast, oof, that sounds so cool, um, is what story that you that you've had in your training career where you stumbled let's just say you were injured and it really taught you a good life lesson for yourself and also for the people that you train um yeah uh, it was probably a training for my first powerlifting meet um and i was uh just regular deadlifts um like my program was to do four sets of three at 405 and which is fine like i had a personal pr pr at the time at 445 so so I had uh, a 405, just a casual, like, every, I did everything right, and all of a sudden, I started a sudden tweak, sudden pull, and I just like, whoa, no, I can't, I have to finish. If I wrote it down, if I wrote down my program, that means I have to do it. I can't just stop now. If it says four sets of three, you do four sets four of three. Four sets of three, and it's like third set, and I, I, as a... as. As a silly, stupid twenty-seven-year-old, um, I, you know, the ego is a powerful thing, mm -hmm. and we're not, you know, we're we're all succumb to it too. So, I, 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 I you know, I, I fucked myself over mm -hmm. from that too, and it was it was a lesson to lesson to learn that I don't want anybody to go through that ever i don't mm -hmm. even want people to experience it so they can learn it either uh -uh. um so learn from it, our mistakes yeah i had to i had to be on the sidelines for like three weeks or whatever uh, eventually i got to the meet i, I did well I, I finally hit 500 at the meet which was great Oof. um but at uh, you know like you shouldn't be a strength coach if you're broken inside and people are looking to you for answers um you know, like that's a red flag for anyone that's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I could be your personal trainer and they're like hobbling and they can't demonstrate the movements. Mm. Um, unless they were like a high level competitor, you should not be broken. You should, you should be the spitting image of health and smart decisions. Mm. Uh, but unfortunately that's not our industry and that's not our field. And it's sad that it's like that. Um, I do think people just need to, uh, lead by example and just you know you know don't you you, you can't be a, a doctor and 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 then just have malpractice i don't know where i'm going with this <laughs> but i was just pretty much like don't be a doctor that <laughs> prescribes you all these drugs or whatever and then start me? talking about different kind of drugs and exactly <laughs> it's like no don't be like the two-star <laughs> review doctor but you can get any prescription you want right you know yeah that's good but i i really appreciate you and thank you for sharing that because i think majority of the times a lot of people see us as personal trainers and we're invincible and we're simply just human and I'm not ashamed about share, sharing any of my injuries. I just, I really want to communicate to people like, hey, like, sure, I work out every day. I focus on my health. I, I focus on my mental health. I focus on my nutrition. But there's days that I stumble and I really screw myself up. And what I really love, lastly, of what you just said about grinding things out and sometimes it can bite you in the ass is what I what I do with my clients and I really teach them is go for it sometimes you have to grind it out but then i really want you to understand too is like if you think that you cannot do this next one mm -hmm. you're already not in the mental state to do it correct you don't do it you already lost yeah, at that point it's like the reps in reserve yeah. for me i i talk about i don't tell them reps in reserve but i tell them if you have only two more left in the tank don't do it absolutely that's what I, I, say. I i i i'm at that point where like I don't think it's worth it. You know 100%. what I mean? I think I want you to just enjoy the rest of your day and come back. We'll try to find this. If today's not the day, 1000%. I would like to to say that, hey, you're not afraid to share your stories to clients. And I would like to encourage anybody that listens or any uh, trainer up and coming is that the people that walk through your doors and mm -hmm. they look at you, they look at you as like invincible or whatever. I think, I think trainers should practice vulnerability mm -hmm. and say, things that bother them. It doesn't have to be the training stuff. It, it could be your mental health. It could be the, what's going on in your day. I think it's a very important practice that a lot of strength coaches should practice. At the end of the day, we're all human. 
if they can see that too, I feel like there's a little more trust uh, in in you and in your expertise. Yeah, it's like humanizing personal training yeah. because it is it is a time of our day where you really do need to focus more on the human rather than all the exercises for sure reason I, why i call this podcast beyond the exercise but i think i beat that so many times but it's go. so good bro. there you I, go there you i go. really i i just figured that out last night and i really think i really want to go with it but um i feel like i can talk to you all day yeah man hey this is fun 100 this, this is so cool dude i love it it's uh again it's a very special episode and i'm really glad that i had it with you uh i feel like i have a really good I have a really high respect for you and what you've done and getting to talk to you with this last hour. I have much more respect for you because of the ways that you think. And I'm sure that when we get on this podcast again, I, there will be some disagreements that I don't really agree uh, that I don't agree with on what you're saying, but today was spot on. I right. agree with probably everything that you, you said, aside from saying that people were younger than 26 should not be but because <laughs> when i was i started when i was 23 and i thought i was good but actually not i'm a grumpy old man just just excuse me for that <laughs> right. we'll let you pass on that one yeah. but um so the way that i want to finish this off is uh one want to say thank you thank you i appreciate it brother and so i have this real cool thing at the end of my podcast now where i ask you three different questions and at the end, those three different questions will morph into one. Let's go. And uh, so you can answer these questions, preferably in a very short sentence. Maybe like one or two sentences will be perfect. And then at the end, I would just let you have your final script. Cool. Um, so the first question would, I'm going to call these uh, the final three. So I'm sure somebody else in their podcast called that too. So No, it's, it's, it's original. This yeah, is, this is, yeah. We started it. Okay. Yeah, the final three, uh, <laughs> Manny style. Um, so number one question is what advice were you given? Let me, wait, 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 let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. So what advice were you given that didn't work for you in terms of oh. being a personal trainer? Oof. What advice? Um, or in life, actually. I, I, I think like... <laughs> Two sentences. Yeah, no, this one company said that if you're not selling, beep, the name of this company, mm -hmm. you're not selling nutrition, and, uh, like, nutrition should be first and foremost, which, blanket statement, I agree with, but it's not realistic. Got it. Second question. Mm-hmm. What advice were you given that did work for you? Not something that you agree with, but something that did work for you. I feel like in, in, in the training realm, mm -hmm. I think that it's in, intuition is okay i feel like you should listen to your body mm. and listen to your feelings as cliche as that sounds mm -hmm. um that has more to do with your performance of that day Got it. and the third question is what advice did you wish somebody gave you sooner I don't know anybody that would tell me this advice, but I wish that somebody would tell me that it's okay if you don't like it. If someone makes something their own thing and you would have never green lighted it, but for some weird way it worked and other people like it. Hmm. Interesting. I had to learn the hard way, mm -hmm. and I had to learn that quite recently, actually. Oof. So. And how all of this now is going to come together at the end. And this is the final question, is what is one thing 
that you wish that people paid more attention to beyond the exercise? Beyond the exercise, if this is, if you're in training or if you're training other people, I feel that you should pay attention to what these sessions improve or make worse your other relationships in your life. I feel like you should pay attention like because of these workouts, are you a better, whatever your profession is, are you a better husband? Are you a better partner? Are you a better worker? Um, do you have a healthy relationship with food? Mm. Do you have a healthy relationship uh, with, you know, with sleep, with diet? Um, the people around you, does it make you a better person? Is it making you worse? And if it is, maybe uh, let's make some changes because I do think this is a positive and I think everybody should do this. Um, but just pay attention to how it affects other people. I like that. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate your time today. I really enjoyed the talk. Yeah. And whoever is listening and you live in the Jersey City area, please come down to Ironbound Performance Athletics here in Jersey City. Where specifically? 334 Second Street, downtown, in between Coles and Newark Ave. And, and we're yes. right in between uh, a butcher shop and a juice shop. So um, come uh, follow us on our socials at Ironbound Performance. Uh, I read all the DMs. If I not don't respond to it, I'm still reading it. So 